Ahoy mates, Julie here, and welcome to Monday's episode of The Voters TV. First up today, let's see what's splashing about in nautical news. Well, last week we brought to you a story about Reed Stowe, a guy who wanted to go and circle spin the Atlantic for three years. And today, we meet some scuba divers who wanted to live underwater for two weeks. Only unlike Stowe, there's no 24-year-old girlfriend involved. But yes, you heard me right. A group of six scuba divers from Italy have successfully accomplished their task of setting a new world record for living under the sea for two weeks. Sounds crazy, huh? Well, this is how it worked. The divers were able to get some time out of the water. Obviously, they had to eat and take a break from their dive equipment. So they slept and dined in small underwater rooms that were weighed down to the ocean floor. Apparently, though, the tiny rooms were extremely humid, so a break from moisture, it was not. Still, 70% of their time was spent in the water. So, what would you do once you got sick of staring at underwater sea life? After all, it's not like reading a book was an option, or talking for that matter. No, these divers, whose breathing and blood oxygenation were constantly being monitored, by the way, spent their time doing the same type of leisure activities humans do on land. They played pool. It's also reported that they played games like Connect Four. Makes sense, the pieces wouldn't float away. So, how did it go? Well, after being brought 49 feet back up to the surface at the end of two weeks, the divers were reported to be in good condition. One diver, Claudio Crochet, told reporters, it was really an incredible experience. I will remember every moment of it in my heart. Aside from attempting to set a record, the experiment was to see how the human body adapted to a different environment like the ocean. The ultimate goal of scientists is to one day colonize the ocean. Yeah, like, I think that's a great idea. And make Kevin Cosner president. Did anyone even watch that movie? For the record, the scientists determined that divers were also able to live among the marine life without disturbing the ecosystem. Remember, though, it was six divers. Multiply that times New York City, and next up, it's on to Ship Shape, where today we deliver trailer boat tips for those of you with a craving for the paven. Is your trailer boat itching to hit the road and take you to new places to fish and ski? Because you know, things like sway, bottoming out, and flat tires have a tendency to take the high out of highway boating. Here from boating writers Gordon and Janet Graney are some tips to get your boat into the water safer and sooner. First, and pardon the pun here, there's a hitch. Your vehicle's owner manual lists its towing capacity, but that's just a start. Your real pulling power depends on your exact transmission package, your engine cooler, and much more, even the weight of junk in your trunk. Next, know the total weight and the tongue weight of your trailer, including the boat's total weight with its power package, gear, filled tanks, and people on board. Once you know this information and your state's trailering requirements, you're ready to get hitched. For the perfect match, see a hitch specialist who can install the right hitch the right way. Welding, for example, may be preferable to a do-it-yourself bolt-on job. Proper loading means 60% of the weight forward of the trailer's front axle. If this weight on your vehicle's rear end raises the front end, it's a no-go until you can level the load. That may mean adding dampening blocks to the springs, heavier or variable rate springs, air shocks, or air springs. And for the final check through, run down this list. Are your brakes hooked up? Have you checked out your brake and signal lights? Do you have a spare wheel on board, just in case? And is your boat bedded and tied down enough for a 55 mile an hour ride? If so, then roll on, baby! And finally today, it's on to our Ship of Fools segment, where the subject today is wacky boating laws. Have you ever been curious about some of the more outdated or obscure boating laws that are still on the record in certain areas? While it is unlikely that anyone will actually be prosecuted for breaking these wacky laws, they just might be able to provide you with a good laugh. 
For instance, did you know that in Cranford, New Jersey, it is illegal to park your boat on your lawn? At one time, this would have resulted in a fine or potentially in the confiscation of your boat. And on the other side of the country, Washington State has a strange boating law as well. Between the east line of the Division Street Bridge and the west line of the Monroe Street Bridge, the Spokane River is off limits. That is, of course, without a permit issued directly from the chief of police. But individuals here are considered to be particularly repressed because wearing or otherwise being in possession of a flotation device on the bank of the river is also grounds for arrest. Allegedly, it proves the individual's intent to go into the off-limit area. And the offshore states have some strange laws as well. In the Aloha state of Hawaii, you must own a boat. It is illegal for any of the residents of Hawaii not to own one, and they could be fined. Still, there are some laws that are on the record which can cause one to wonder what it was that happened to make them necessary in the first place. For example, Kansas has a law against hunting for rabbits while in a motorboat. To be riding a motorboat while hunting for rabbits is prohibited by the state. Crazy. Hopefully you were able to get some enjoyment out of these laws. And that's a wrap on this episode of The Boaters TV. Join us back here on Wednesday when da -da -da -da, we at The Boaters TV will be celebrating our 50th episode. That's right. It's TBTV's golden anniversary, so check back on Wednesday to see what we've got in store. Meanwhile, as always, safe and happy boating to you all. And regardless of what state you're boating in, no bunny hunting! This episode of The Boaters TV has been brought to you by the phrase, really? really, really, really bored, which is what I would be if I had to spend 14 days straight chilling on the ocean floor. Kudos to the divers who accomplished the feat.